Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, today we speak again about intellectual properties and again we'll follow the path of the money. We'll follow the path of the team, of the startup, of the laboratory, the intellectual properties, technology, market, and in brackets, regulation. So just to repeat in a few slides what happens, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, what is a patent? A patent is a right to avoid others to commercialize technology. If you have a patent, you have the right to avoid others to do something. You have no right to do it yourself. You have the right to avoid others for doing something. It's a negative monopoly from a country. Okay? So a, a patent is defined by the claims as was uh, uh, published in the book. There, there are kinds of intellectual properties what, that are written in the book, like patents, like trademarks, etc., and there are intellectual properties which are not uh, defined in the book. So we're talking about patents, and everything is, is claimed in the book is, um, is excluding others for commercializing a technology. So an idea can be patentable, can be patent, if it stands on three legs. First leg, the technology must be useful. It must work. If it's not working, this is not a patentable issue. Okay? This is easy. And this is objective uh, characteristic. Now, other character, character of uh, patentable is novel. Whether or not it was published just before you file a patent. So if something was published a day before you filed uh, your patent, you have no patent. And this is also an objective a parameter of the patentability. You, you okay there? <laughs> now, the third characteristic is very, very difficult. This is inventive step. Invet inventive step, you can imagine it as a, being a wow. If somebody says wow, this is a patent. Now, no, not anybody says, says wow, but a Fushita. Fushita is a person having an ordinary skill in the art, an expert. Now, if the expert says wow, this is subjective, of course. The patent is patentable. Okay, so those are the three legs of uh, patentable uh, matter. Now, we, we talk briefly about the timetables of patent. Now, we, we said that patent has largely three steps, three stages. The first stage, we call it Paris Treaty, or the per period of Paris. The patent gained four good parameters. It is very cheap. Even though you file it only in the United States or even though you file it only in Israel, it's patentable all over the world or your priority date is reserved for you all over the world, it's, it's a secret. Nobody knows about it because it's a, it will be published only after 18 months or one year and a half. And the last one, your patent, your patent application is flexible. You can, you can add more and more data. We will we'll bring an example of what are flexible patents, but as I explained in the last uh, lesson, if we file a patent about a marker and we wish to, uh, to have a very narrow uh, claim about a green marker, you can file uh, another uh, part of the patent that says wherein the marker is green. This is okay. Now, after one year, usually the patent is going to another stage, which is called Patent Cooperation Treaty, or in short, PCT. In the PCT, is still worldwide protect, protected, is very cheap, and is published only after one year and a half. And it's not flexible at all. After two and a half years, the patent is going to the last stage of his life. This is a national phase. National phase saying this is not worldwide uh, situation. You must protect your patent in each and every country you want a, a protection. And then the patent be began to be examined. After about five or six years, the examined patent became to be a patent, a granted patent, issued patent, or otherwise it dropped out and you have nothing in your end. So very briefly saying for our lecture that two main uh, uh, stages in the life of the patent. Just before you file your patent and after one year and a half. 
in the first step, just before finding a pattern, you're doing a period art research. You're looking in the literature, looking for similar uh, technologies. Now, it's quite tricky because when you're looking for other technologies, you cannot see technologies which are less than one year and a half because patents are published only after one year and a half. So you can see only old technology. This is tricky, but it's tricky in even a way because everybody has the same, the same trick. Now, after one year and a half, your patent becomes to be published, and saying so, you, 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 may, you may say that after one year and a half, you can have another search and look for all the technology, even those technologies that were filed at the day or after your day of, the, of, of your filing date. If, you, if you're following me, this is okay? Okay. We'll talk qu quite a bit about uh, searches, so I, I just I want to, to, to see this uh, present, uh, presentation. So let's talk about the real life of uh, patents. Now, why, why I say real life? Because there, there, there are the non-real li life uh, cycles. Non-real life cycles is those situations that you have a problem and you find a solution. I have a problem and say, wow, if I do so and so, I, I, I can answer uh, th this problem and you have a patent on that. Now, this, usually in my office, I never see, see such examples. Usually you have a solution. You know to do something. After you, you require enough data to know what to do, you ask, the pro you ask in the literature what are the problems to solve with your uh, solution. So for that I call it the real life of a patent. So th there is the first step which is usually in your hometown. In, in Israel, it's in Israel. And then, this is in brown, and then the, the lifespan outside uh, Israel. In your laboratory you have an idea. You're doing a, a research and say this is a nice idea. You file a patent after doing a literature search. You're looking for the problem for your solution, and then you find your market. After finding your market, you, you produce your first product, a product which really works. I call it product alpha. And then the timetable uh, leads you to the PCT step. This is about one year and a half time. And then you file another additional patents. And then you get the beta product. Beta product, I define it as the product which which is what it's working, but it's working under regulation, under relevant regulation. And then you, you have your real product, you're going to a real regulation, and then you, you sell it. So those st steps are incubation, startup, and growth. There's a long time of doing search and one step of uh, publication after one year and a half. we'll see quite a bit about the value of, of patents, the money of patents. So in the beginning, most of the costs are coming to the patent attorney, are coming to the patent itself. Uh, to file a patent, it will cost you about five to six thousand dollars. So in a very small budget, a large amount of the money will, come to, will go to the, to the patent. In other steps, the value of your company is, is increased and the, the expenditure on the patents in a relative manner decrease and decrease uh, up to sales. <coughs> nice. <laughs> Opa. I like it very much. Okay. <laughs> uh, here you see a, a, time, a time span of a technology. So this is the X um, axis and then the, the value of the product or the, the, the value of your patent. So in the beginning you have a very cheap patent in your hand because it, it's costless. It's, uh, it's cost only $5,000. This is not really big money, but the risk is very, very big. You have no product, you have no team, you have no market. You have no regulation, so the risk is, is quite big. Now, after a while, after for sure after product alpha, you know what you are doing. You have a team, you have a product, you have a market. 
so that your, your value is very high and the risk is low. Now, the, the way it looks is not, it's non, non-linear. In the beginning, you have, in the idea, you have high risk and nothing in your hand. Now, at time, you have more and more assets in your hand. You have patent, you have products, etc. And the risk reduced in a quite considerable, considerable uh, way. Nevertheless, if you remember the time span of, of patents, after two and a half years, there is a shift. After two and a half years, the patent becomes to be very, very expensive. The cost of the patent after two and a half years is about $30,000 to $60,000. It becomes to be very, very expensive. But the evolution in the laboratory is not so big. So, so the, the, the value of the company is not so big. So just by numbers, half of the patents are dead after two and a half years because the risk is too high for the company. So just, just be sure that if you file a patent in the university or in a startup, you have about 50% that the patent will not survive more than two and a half years because the risk is too high. Now, we spoke just a few words about the structure of a patent. Patent, in very general way to say, it, it comprises two uh, sectors. First sector is description. The second sector is claims. Now, just be sure that claims are not claim in a legal way. Claims are definitions. So is the sector of definitions of the technology and the sector of de describing the, those um, description. So if there is an area of technology, I will call it IPC. IPC stands for International Patent Classification. So if there is a class of technology, IPC, and this class A61 something is medical device classification. A is human necessity, 61 is a medicine, B is a medical device, and 12 is a, a orthopedic or chirurgic uh, instrument. So all the instruments uh, used in urology, etc., in, in brain surgery, etc., are A61, B12. So in your own particular IPC, there is old data, published data, and there is a new, a new stuff, patentable stuff. The line, the purple line is the claim, is the broad definition of the technology. In the middle, this is the description, okay? Now, you see the purple line? The purple line is the first claim. This is the independent claim. This is the, the broader, broader uh, definition. You can have in your patent many, many less broad definitions. The broader definition called independent claim. The narrower definitions, narrower claims are dependent claims, okay? How to construct a claim, how to define a technology. Not by, by law, but, but just a, a tradition. This is the language to define a technology. There is no other language other than one written on the blackboard. As something useful for something, comprising having first model and second model, or third model, etc. All models are interconnected to each other in a way. And then the miracle word, we're in. We're in says, from here, from the world we're in, something new, something inventive will come. So if, if you have a definition or a claim, you'll see a device used for, for cutting something, comprising a handle and a blade, interconnected, interconnected to said handle, where in said blade is made of steel. Now the novelty is only the material of the blade, only after they were in. Everybody is following me? Now, this is dependent claim. This is a broader claim. Less broad claim, narrow claim, is dependent claim, saying the knife of claim one, where in said metal, uh, there is still a blade, is made of something. Much narrower. This is dependent claim, this is independent claim. This is the only way you can read patents or write patents. So if you want to, to read a, a, 
a patent, go to the claims and look for the were in. The novelty is after the word were in. Now, when I said that there are two chapters, claims and description, it was quite general. Uh, uh, such, such <laughs> the, it was general presentation. The description comprises a lot of chapters. All, all of them just examples how to use the definitions. So if you have no time, you just want to have a glance about technology, go to the definition of the claims and read, read them. Okay? Even though the pattern is as 60 pages, 100 pages, read only the first claim. It's enough. Now let's go, about, let's go again to searches. And just I show you the way a search looks like. I search for, I search for a CNS, okay, Central Nerve, Nervous System. I can see in my uh, patent engine that the patents were filed in about 100 countries from the beginning of the previous century up to today. There are 15,000 families, which means 50,000 patents were filed uh, as a Paris applications, the first application. And after, afterwards, about 137,000 patents were citing those, uh, were using those Paris treatments. Uh, do you understand me? Say it again? Okay. You can see also that about half of the patents were granted in, in the end. If you file two applications, you have a very good chance that one of them would be granted in the end. Okay? This is the way to read the search. So you can use your own searches. This is the uh, search engine of the European community, EPO. We call it Spacenet. This is a very good engine. Uh, very, uh, another very good engine is uh, Google Patents. Very, very good engine. Um, now, every country has its own patent search engine. Israel has its own Israel patent office engine, etc. But if you look in the Spacenet, the European one or the American one, you can find most of the 90 million patents we have. Okay? Now, I will not use in this uh, literature, in uh, this presentation, uh, those uh, commercial uh, products. I will use very expensive uh, database. Some of the universities, as in a library, uh, at least were licensed for that. That's called PathBase. I will, I will use PathBase. But in PathBase, the presentation is very nice, but you have no you have no more data other than uh, you can see in Google or in uh, uh, Google Patents or Spacenet. So let's go again to the search. Okay, this is the search. Now, if I, if I read all those 15,000 families, I have no time to read it. If I ask the computer to read all those families, I'll see a lot of words. And there, there, are, conne there are connections between first word to a second word. Let's say there is a connection between from technical settable salts and another world, or between hydrogen uh, atom and uh, C1, C14 alkyl, okay? There are connections between words. So if, if, I, if I read the uh, patterns, I can read only the words. This is okay, this is a good search because I see the voca vocabulary, the keywords I used to see. Now, I, I, I think we spoke about it and then I, we finished the lecture about the CNS, about the central nervous system, we look who files those patents, who is active in this world. And we'll see that Pfizer the Pfizer company, this is the black one and the blue one, are the most active company in this world. I cannot see for me how many patents, but 2,400 patents families they file. Okay, so the first active, the most uh, active company is Pfizer. The second one is WIFE. Now, if you know that WIFE was acquired by Pfizer also and, and the, the nutrition uh, section was acquired by Nestle, so the two big ones are just the big pharma named Pfizer. The third one is uh, Genentech, which is a big biological company. So you can see that most of the activity uh, uh, is, is used to be by the big, very big companies. You see that the commercialization of the patent was all over the world, you see the, the most uh, developed countries, the United States, Europe, China, India, etc. 
You see the little one is Israel here. And you see that uh, people file patent in two types of nations. In producing nations like China, India, etc., and in the market, which is Europe and United States. Okay? This is about uh, who, is, who is filing patent. Now, if, if you have an idea and you want to search, for, look for a strategic partner, you want some money for somebody, okay? Do a search and you see that Pfizer is a very good opportunity for your technology. Now, I think we, we spoke about that also. If you look at those 15,000 patents we have, what is the most cited patent? The most important or most uh, interesting patent in those 15,000 patents. You see that a, a patent about lipokin, uh, of, of lipokin is the most cited patent, okay? It was cited about 700 times a year. Two times a day, people file a patent and citing the patent of uh, lipokin. Uh, usually lipokin cite uh, itself, but all the big pharma citing this patent. And this is the way patent looks like. This is the abstract. This is the title, the inventor, the owner. This is the IPC, International Patent Classification, A61K something. This is the time the patent was filed, about 2002. This is the time the patent was granted, about six years after the, the filing. And this is the patent number. Now, this patent relates to the CNS. You can see it here. And it, uh, it describes, uh, we spoke about it, about a soup. A soup comprising a soup, liquid, and um, solid ingredients just immersed within the soup. A primary and secondary content in a soup. And the way, this is, this is the patent. In the, in the soup, there is a soup, uh, there's a soup and uh, particles within the soup. And the soup is uh, divided into two groups, etc. And this says any drug acting like a soup, having those, uh, located in, in those uh, families, are our own technology. For that, this pattern is very, very uh, um, interesting. And this is the claim. We'll not read the claim, we just see, we'll just map it, okay? So it's a formulation, useful for pharma, pharmaceutical formulation, comprising A and B, and we've got here the wording of where in. So something new is, is from here. Now this pattern has two where ins. This is, this is the last where in, this is the first where in. So you should read all the wording after the where in and uh, this pattern is very narrow because you should read the technology, narrow it in the first where in and then further narrow it in the second where in. This is their claim. Uh, this is dependent claim, just spoke about it. This is their dependent claim. The pharmaceutical uh, formulation of claim one, wherein, this is a novel st uh, stuff, this, this first fraction comprises about 30 to 80% of phenofibrat. This is the composition. In the wide spectrum, it says from, from 5 to 80. In the narrow, it says from 30 to 80. This is the way you should read patents. So it's very, very easy to read patterns. Maybe it, it's frightening in, in the beginning, but when you see the patterns, you understand what to read and what to, to avoid from reading. So until now, we spoke about intellectual properties, just in brief. Let's go more about technology, market, and the interconnection between IP and market and technology. What are the benefits of doing good searches? There are many, many benefits. Most of the benefits are not related at all to the IP. Most of the benefits are, are targeted towards the market and, and the regulation in the end. I try to explain in this presentation why. So if you're, you're doing a search, you can, know that you can understand the trends, who filing what, when, where, etc. You, so you can have a very good business plan targeting the correct territory niche. You, you can find, you can allocate collaborators or competitors. You know that anyone who combines uh, uh, efforts with you is a collaborator and others are competitors. The same guys can be either competitors or collaborators, the same company. So if, 
it's just the naming if they're collaborating with you, they're collaborators. So you should identify all of them, what they are doing, in what step, in, in gener uh, what ge technology gener technological generation they are. The, thereby you can assess what is your preferred collaborator <coughs> or in, from which uh, strategic partner you should run away, avoid any content. Uh, you can def define your market and your product, um, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, maybe it's very hard to read now, now, but I'll give examples to understand in the end. So let's have a case study about IT. Let's look for information technology. The wide, wide wording of information technology. So the, the patent begins from the Second World War up to now. The way there are about 10,000 patents in this uh, area, and from each family provides us with six, uh, six uh, offsprings. So there are 10,000 uh, first patents and more than 600 uh, applications. The killing rate, the granting rate is about 67%, which is a very high number. And people file a patent both in the producers and in the market. See also that Israel is uh, shining there. So don't forget that what is IPC? IPC is International Patent Classification. I'll use this, this term quite a lot now. This is uh, uh, just naming a technology by, by the IPC. You can say I, uh, IT, you can say information technology, and you can say IPC such and such. I will use IPC. So this is the IPC of IT. This is the IPC, International Patent Classification, Information te uh, Technology. You see that the best, uh, or the most active uh, IPC is uh, uh, GO6F. And what is GO6F? It's just written be just below. It's Physics, Computing, Electric Digital Data Processing. Okay, Data Processor is, is GO6F. So there are, oh, sorry. There are quite a lot, um, quite a lot uh, IPCs. You see that there is a line interconnecting all of them, and the line, if you if you calculate, is about sixty-seven percent. One to <coughs> about two uh, applications, so two applications yield with one granted patent, sixty-seven percent. So this line is a line of sixty-seven percent. Now, if you as a computer in your search, when those patents were filed, you will have such a map. Now, just beware, this map is not when the patents were filed, but when the patents were published. So the publication date has a peak in, let's say, 2007, which means that the filing was one year and a half just before. Everybody with me? So you see that uh, there was a peak of filing in 2007, let's say 11,000 patents in one year. And the granted, the granted uh, plot is about six years later. Six years later. This is the granted and this is the application. About six years later. It takes about six years from filing to granting. Now let's, let's read again those files. You'll see there is a peak. So if we file today a patent, we file it in an area of, in an era of post-peak. This is a post-peak technology. Post-peak technology. Now, I will, not, I will not consider very seriously the, the first one and, a, one, and a year, one and a half years because the computer cannot see all the, all the patents because patents are secret for one year, year and a half. But you can see there is a very strong a decrease in the number of patents which are filed. So we are in a post-peak situation. It's a old data, it's an old technology. Now, this, this is one way to look at, at that. This is a second way to look at it. So between 2008 up to 2010, it was one kind of a slope, very huge slope. And from 2010 up to today, there is another type of slope. Now, yes? Is it specifically for data processing or IT in general? This is only for IT. This oh, is IT. A, a processing. No, this is for IT. 
the patents in IT. I just count how many patents were filed. Can you explain that there is such a war? Oh, now we can, we can try to explain why there are changes in, in, the, in the plot. Maybe because there are new technologies, new de generation of technologies. Maybe there are new markets. Maybe new regulations. I will not provide you with the answer for that. But you can see that a very precise reading of the results can show that something happened here. You can see the day it happened. I take for exa another example, neural, neural networks. Another example. Neural networks f uh, are filed from uh, 1966 up to date. 3,000 patents yield with 11,000 uh, applications, about 60% uh, uh, killing rate. Again, filing in the producers and in the market, just the same. Now, this is the peak uh, presentation of the IT. This is the peak presentation of neural networks. You can see there is no, no peak here, no peak. Just a slope of reduction. People writing less and less in this area. That's all, okay? This is not post-peak technology. It's just a tired uh, field. And this is, as I see, this is the IPC of neural networks that you, you can see here, just for the demonstration, that neural network and IT share the same IPC. The same IPC. Now, we, in a Boolean way, we cut neural networks and IT. Technologies that are uh, connecting neural networks and IT. Now, the numbers are very small. There are only 25 families, which is very narrow uh, presentation, about 200 patterns. And you see there are two big actors in that, Rosamond and Microsoft. All the, all, the, all the rest are very, very small company. So all this market really belong to very big two companies. And if you wish to know with whom to collaborate, you can ask your computer, who are the inventors of the patent? Here the list of the inventors. So you, you collaborate with people, not with companies. So if you want to have email to somebody, email those people. I'm looking now for the time plot of finding those patents. And you see that there is no one peak. There are three peaks, a series of three peaks. I will call it the 2000 peak, the 2006 peak, and the 2012 peak. Three peaks. So something happening here, okay? Let's see what's happening here. I do something else now. For this lecture, I'll, I'll try to look from those patents, which of the patents are Israeli patents. The way I do it, I'm just writing all the towns in Israel. This are, this, those are the major towns in Israel, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Haifa, etc., of the assignee or the inventor, and ask which of the Israelis filed those patents. And you see uh, that there are two big companies, uh, uh, not, reg not regular co companies are writing most of the patents. One is Ramot, which is a Tel Aviv University, and the second one is uh, the University of Jerusalem. Soon. Now, the other companies are, are well uh, look, uh, companies which are le well located in Israel, like IBM, Intel, Cisco, ag again IBM, uh, Aco, Helsin, SanDisk, which is an Israeli company, etc. So you, you can see immediately with whom Israeli guys you could be collaborate or with whom you should run away. So those are the three peaks. IBM or Intel are considered to be Israelis? No, I'm just looking, uh, looking for collaboration or just uh, looking for from whom should be afraid of. So I look where the inventor is, li is living. I if he's living in Tel Aviv, I know he's Israeli. Even though he filed it in with for IBM or he filed for a startup and IBM bought the startup, emails with this startup, I can locate it from the search. I can see the tree, the, the lifespan of the technology until IBM bought it in the end because I, I'm looking for where he was living when he filed the patent. Um, 
for my humble, uh, humble experience, there's 100% of success here. You have no, no, no full data here. So I'm looking again for those three peaks. Now let's go for the first peak. I read all those patterns in the first peak and I read uh, quite a lot of words. Now don't look at the words, but just, uh, just uh, picture them in your brain. <laughs> just see them in a glance. And you see that the main uh, players in those days of 2006 were Intel, Aco, uh, Israeli company uh, called Biosensors, Moshe Ben Chaim, and SanDisk. Okay? Those are the, the uh, big players in 2006. Now, if I look in the IPC of 2006, I see the one to two line, and I see, and I see the technologies area of 2006. Now, I do the same for the second peak, which is 2010, if I remember right. Other players, the same wording, yet I see that if this was the map of the IPC in the beginning, this is the map now. What's happened? Few of the technologies were pushed uh, forward and some of the technologies uh, decreases. This is a, a way to look about the um, uh, Darwinism of the, of the technology. Some of the technolog technologies um, became very successful. Some of them are not successful in the market. So you can see that between 2006 and 2012, <coughs> Some of the IPCs are quite successful and they push forward. The way you see it, they are filing more and more applications in this area and they get granted more and more patent in this area. So in 2006, we, we could imagine who will be the major player um, six years later. Let's see if we do it also now. So we're looking now on the 2000, this is 2012 map. We see other, other players, IBM, Cisco, etc. the same wording, and you'll see that the IPC exploded. The technology exploded in a way. Some of the technology uh, stopped, um, people stopped filing with them. Some technology, like this technology, become more and more relevant. The market accepts those uh, patents more and more, so they become more relevant. Uh, some of the patents will just get uh, matured, from application, they, they went to, to be granted patent. So in 2006, some of the, of the IPCs uh, uh, were succeeded in the market. Other continues to succeed. So we can have a map here. What are the good trends in this technology and what are the bad trends in this technology? We can uh, foresee the future in very uh, easy way. Um, the same picture, just about companies. I'm, I'm not looking for the companies which has a lot of granted patents. I'm looking for the um, companies that have a lot of applications. And you see that uh, Microsoft and uh, Aco and uh, Empire Technology have a lot of applications. So I forecast that in 2018, those companies will be the rulers of the markets. They are very active, find a lot of patents, so I, I think that if somebody wants to invest or collaborate with some other companies, those are the three good guesses uh, where to, sign, to send your email or to be afraid of. Question up, up to you. How do they go about, uh, for example, Microsoft? Are they buying yeah. patents? I, I mean, they're filing, but at the same time, are they making acquisitions on the market in order to, to get other close patents, so to speak, if you have a competitive patent, they need to acquire that in order to file their own? Do they do this protective kind of way of uh, securing you. Their, their... Thank you for the question, very yeah. good question. Uh, we call this a situation coalition. Coalition is a, is a situation where you have a soup, let's say a chicken soup, you have uh, quite, quite a lot, small drops of oil. So you can steer the soup or do nothing, all the uh, all bulb will emerge together, will coalesce together. So in the end, you've got only one or two big, um, big oil um, vehicles, and very small, uh, and very very few small um, vehicles. So this is called coalition. In patents, the strong being stronger, and the weak become to be weaker, and the strong eat the small one.
The, the big one is the small one. So in my, in my opinion, in this area, most of the patents uh, were acquired by the big ones in a coalition manner. Who are the inventors? The, who are the Israeli inv inventors? Your search will take, will give you the answer in two seconds. Uh, the big one, uh, listen, that is Professor Nir Giladin, Professor Jeffrey Hausdorf. They are most active in this area. They are in the Ichilov Hospital, also in Ramot. So you can speak with them. Again, about searches. Searches are not just for, for understanding what is patentable or not. Search is a very convenient tool to understand the market and the technology coming, emerging, or getting out from the market. Very convenient way. 